the flammability is the biggest key to the problem. So on a hotter day, the flammability obviously is reached very easily, uh, and any sort of ignition source can then cause a fire. Engineers work with aircraft fuel and fueling systems on a daily basis. It's important to understand the risks associated with fuel. Fuel is a flammable substance, and a fuel spill can result in serious injury, death, and significant property damage. This is due to the risk of explosion or fire. Even a small spill is a potential source of fire until the fuel is removed and the vapour has dissipated. In the event of a fuel spill, the following steps are to be taken. If safe, take steps to isolate the flow of fuel, evacuate the area of all personnel not directly engaged in shutting off the flow of fuel, or those required for emergency procedures. For large spills greater than 100 litres or of an unknown quantity, use the nearest fire alarm button to evacuate the area and make contact with local fire emergency services. Establish a 15 metre exclusion zone of ignition sources. This includes preventing the entry and exit of vehicles, use of work platforms, tools and moving equipment that could cause a spark. Workers operating powered mobile equipment at a height will need to shut down the equipment and be rescued using non-powered methods. For spills greater than 100 litres, the local emergency services will coordinate spill containment. For fuel spills less than 100 litres, spill kits are available to dam the fuel and contain the spill. We don't really need you guys to do anything apart from if, if it's safe to do so is to remove some ignition sources. But mainly that the, um, the area's been evacuated. Um, we don't want to have anyone in the, in the danger area. Uh, we'd like to see that everyone is actually out, out of the building. Uh, when we arrive, we don't want you in the way of the vehicles as well. So we want you to a point that's safe uh, for you guys. The vehicles will come in fairly fast. And uh, the last thing obviously we want to do is have anyone get injured by one of our vehicles. Um, the other things that we want to make sure of is that everyone's accounted for. Uh, the last thing we want to do is come into a situation and we, we've got people in offices or in other areas that have been overlooked. Um, the problem with a large fuel spill is that it can enter drains, run off, have a running fuel fire. You've got a lot of uh, working machinery, you've got uh, engines, you've got uh, combustion materials, you've got uh, power tools, electricity. Uh, you've even just got the uh, temperature of the day itself or hot engine parts, hot brakes, uh, pretty much anything at all that could provide a, an emission to the fuel. Uh, and the weather itself is going to play a big part. Uh, you know, anything above 38 degrees Celsius, the fuel's already at its slash point. Don't wait to call us. Uh, if you've got a fuel spill happening or starting, by all means, give us a call. Uh, we're only about three minutes away and uh, we can take care of the situation or, or absolutely just cover the situation while it's decided what needs to be done. Uh, the last thing you want to do is have a, a, an evolving situation that is, gets out of control very fast with very, very expensive machinery and lots of people involved. Uh, if we can get on the scene, take care of it, take control, um, usually it'll work out for everyone. So definitely give us a call as soon as you can. Post-incident, dispose of the used spill kit material in allocated waste disposal, report the fuel spill through Intellex, and complete a spill report. Debrief the people involved and arrange for restocking of spill kits. Remember, in the event of a fuel spill, take the following steps. Initiate control, containment, clean up, disposal, reporting, debriefing, restocking spill kits.